These are numbers that were unheard of just a few years ago. And it is the reminder system inside the electronic record that is allowing this superb patient care to continue. So it was sort of this disconnect that, you know, here you have these bureaucrats building their own little empire in central office where you had the people in the field actually planting the seeds, raising the crops, and things were blossoming. From 1978, uh, Rob has these meeting notes. We had the design and the in intention of having a VA, DOD, IHS, government-wide hospital information system. Lost my uh, wife, Robin, to uh, breast cancer. And uh, what I saw of the U.S. healthcare system during that ordeal had uh, awakened me to the fact that there were deep problems of quality, coordination of care, um, medical errors. And Ted O'Neill um, was not in the doghouse exactly, but uh, because he was uh, an original thinker, so to speak, uh, he and his boss, who will remain nameless, didn't quite get along. The whole thing was a process by which quite a number of people, originally unknown to, to most of us, would stand up at a particular time and basically keep the ball rolling. Ted's uh, approach was to involve as many users as possible from the very beginning. In the course of doing my research on the book, the, the favorite part uh, for me, and I think for most readers, is the chapter on the so-called hard hats. Um, uh, I was, of course, curious to find out where this fantastic um, world-class uh, VISTA medical health care system came from. And uh, <coughs> it turned out that it was through a collection of uh, a very colorful and committed frontline employees of the VA who, starting in the late 1970s, had more or less on their own uh, against central office dictates, um, developed a whole new model of health care. So I would go to people in central office who would become absolutely irate when you mentioned what was happening in the field. So we have this thing called the uh, Certificate of Outstanding Engineering Achievement on the Underground Railroad. And I remember uh, passing these out to people. And uh, it was kind of like an Academy Award. It was. VA doctors, I think, trying to improve their very poor personal working conditions, who on their own went forward and, and created all this uh, in, in ingenuity. And One of the uh, models of developing a computerized record, I think, is the tight association the clinicians have had with the programmers. Programmers all over the VA would come into our institution in part because the field office for uh, Washington, D.C. was inside our hospital. The other part was the lateral connections, the, the ability to connect and communicate across the, the stovepipes. And that was really the goal of Mailman. These were laptops in which um, the practice of medicine was changed at many levels. Uh, for example, I observed that when a medication was given to a patient, uh, the patient had a identification band with a barcode. The nurse had the same, and the med itself had a barcode. And there was a ritual of first scanning the med, scanning the patient, scanning <coughs> the nurse. If it was the wrong med at the wrong time, the wrong person, the wrong dose, the computer stopped that. I knew that was a big deal, and we all know it now because the Institute of Medicine has, in a recent study, told us that the average American experiences one medication error every day he or she is in the hospital. Hundreds of thousands of Americans die from these kind of medication errors, and this kind of uh, uh, 
procedure, simple as it might seem, um, saves tremendous numbers of lives. At five o'clock at night, I would just wander over to the computer group and say, well, what, what have you got now? And they'd tell me, and I'd say, wow, we can use this, and we can use that, and we can use it in this place. And his concept was, well, uh, all that information, that data that was captured, could well be used by other applications throughout the medical center. So having a data dictionary, having a layer of, of communications that we could talk to each other, and it was kind of the default structure. You know, by default, you were sharing the same information. At that time, there were others who were, uh, that, that corporations whose, whose primary role was providing the, uh, the business and billing systems for hospitals, and uh, they, of course, uh, uh, were operating on the business model that all of their software, all their application software, uh, were, was proprietary. And the concept of the hospital information system developing that would be uh, uh, in the public domain and be non-proprietary was a direct challenge to their business processes. There are, as I understand it, um, forces in the world today that want to change that culture in the VA, who are afraid of that culture, or who want to sell that culture out in order to appease um, some commercial software vendor who might be a large political contributor to a campaign. I just remember how impressed I was with how dedicated these people were and how they were willing to put their professional reputations and even their personal welfare on the line to do what they knew was right for the system, for the veteran patient, for the taxpayer, uh, despite all the constraints that they were working under. 